What's going on, Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another player interview. We are just we have got so much event coverage from the EU Championship event. I hope all you guys in the EU love me now. Uh, but yeah, I'm here with uh, Jacob Hand. So Jacob, how are you doing tonight? Uh, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, so how did you do with this past tournament this past weekend? Uh, so yeah, I came 22nd, so top 32. But unfortunately, it was a top 16 cut, so that doesn't really mean much. Hey, top 32 out of what was it like around 250 right 250 players 250 yeah yeah that's a pretty solid that's a pretty solid count man and and i found out yesterday that uh they they decided to play out top cut in the same day that just sounds insane yeah so it was obviously with that amount of people you would expect an eight round tournament so you you were guaranteed to have one exo at the end right but they only did they only did seven because of timing issues and then they were going to do the top 16 cut because again of timing issues uh, they only had the space for one day and they had to limit it to 250 people even though loads of other people wanted to go so it was like a bit of a mess going in but the event was really well run i think like the seven rounds were finished by like half six which is crazy like yeah. everything was really smooth yeah i've heard the same thing that like getting registered and everything was a bit of a pain but uh that like the tournament ran really smoothly but yeah i mean i hope in the future they get the uh, the the venue for two days or more because that just uh that really kind of diminishes the experience a little bit like you could have played out top cut and probably done pretty well but um yeah, it's okay there's, there's more tournaments in the future to play at but still congratulations on top 32 uh and we'll get into the deck profile so why did you decide to play broly and why did you decide to play broly gt because i think this is like a pretty shugesh dependent list if, if you agree with me so tell me tell me a little bit why you decided to play this deck so me and my friend tristan decided quite early on when we like knew that we were going to euros that we were gonna test like every deck decide what the best one for us was and then we were just gonna make the best list we could think and just play the exact same list for the event mm. um so we were trying that out i had built like shamron janemba uh red freezer basically everything that did well in america and we were just testing it against each other and like every deck we played we were like oh this is really good against this matchup but it gets completely destroyed by this deck we just couldn't find anything that had like a good around the board matchup right and i i kind of suggested as a joke oh we could try like gt and then, and then we like ran the theory in our head and we were like well it has a good shamron matchup it has a good janemba matchup it has like a middling freezer matchup but like Shemron and Janemba are the two ones that were struggling because you either have like a good Shemron matchup or a good Janemba matchup. Right. And this has both. So let's just try it. And we kept playtesting it and the deck just seemed like crazy. It was really hard to counter. And, and what do you feel like? Cause I, I can understand the Shenron matchup because it's, it's so aggressive. But, and I'm wondering, what do you think is the edge in the Janemba matchup? Is it the same idea, just the aggro? So yeah, if you play the Janemba matchup like correctly, so you like go for game while they're on like six life, Mm -hmm. um so you stop their awakening and they can't use their um discard it's really hard for them in the first three turns which is when this deck kills like most of the time to to deal with it because they they have such limited energy um like i think in the tournament we killed a janemba player while he was still on one energy um, wow. he had to like tie, time magic for like one but then we just bad ringed it anyway so he completely lost that um, they'll try and sit on two and then Mafubi you and you just bad ring them and that's it. They they can't do anything. Fair and enough. They play so many like one drop 10Ks because they intend to go into the late game. You just don't allow them to get to late game. Makes sense. Makes sense. So uh, we'll get into the into the main deck. So two scientists food, one mirror creator absorb. This seems like a really good ratio for overwhelms, <laughs> especially in a deck like this. Uh, three pint size warrior. Uh, only two intensifying power trunks. Um, I'm curious about this number of, of this ratio. Like why include it at only two? Yeah, there, there were a lot of weird ratios in this deck, I'll be honest. Um, so originally we were playing intensifying and chain attack because we were like, oh, it's a it's a substitute to Shugesh. Uh, that was completely terrible, like, <laughs> thinking on off. It didn't work. That got cut really early. Um, but we found a few games where intensifying like helped us awaken. And we were like, well, I don't want to cut it completely. So we kind of just left two in there. And I, I didn't use it the whole tournament. It was pretty crap. It could have just been a fourth pint size or something else. Just um, a little extra was pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't really come up like ever. I sided it out most games. Fair enough. Still a good card, but yeah, I could totally see that. Uh, two double strike, four determined Super Saiyan on Goku. So this is my question. I, I wanted to wait till a little bit later, but we'll get into it now because it kind of it's kind of relevant now. So 
Uh, determined Super Saiyan Son Goku, obviously, it's the nuts to Shugesha Sen on, like, turn two of all the into yeah. Triple Flash. Uh, but what happens, like, when you get Kronoa, like, how slow does his deck become? Right, so, the obviously, your game plan is you charge a yellow, you do Bardock stuff, so you awaken turn two with a red, and then Shugesh the three drop in and X evolve. Right. Um, if, that, if that doesn't happen because you've been chronoa or you don't draw the three drop, you literally just go to next turn, charge a second red, play three for the determined, awaken, and then you have a yellow and a red, so you have bad ring and your EX evolve. And which sounds like awful because you wait until turn three, but if you look at like most of the like big kill combo decks, so Shemron Gogeta goes off on turn four, and uh, Broly Lineage goes off on turn four, so we're still killing them a turn before they go off. So it, it probably works out if you get Cronod. And in the tournament, it did. Like, we got Cronod every game two and three and still won. So it was fine. Nice. So you, you're saying basically that Cronoa is uh, not the biggest issue to this deck then? No, not at all. So, uh, so another question. Uh, I've seen a lot of these Broly lists, especially the eight, the top eight list and the second place, completely cut Shugesh. Do you think that you could see playing this deck in the future, cutting Shugesh, and that you might just be, be better off for it, or do you think the, uh, that the game one advantage is just so worth it? Yeah, I don't. I think like the re we were originally playing two Shugesh and two Super Combo, right? And we were we were kind of like whenever we saw the Super Combo, we were like, well, if they don't have Cronoa and this is Shugesh, they lose. So why would we not play like more Shugesh? Because in games where they don't see Cronoa in that first turn or that second turn, if they get that far, and we have we have Shugesh, they lose. That's it. Like it's so hard to deal with Shugesh into three drop into EX Evolve. It's so much advantage. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean and, it's uh, it's playing the numbers game to you know how many how many Cronoas are people going to side? How many uh, when yeah, are they exactly. see it? Yeah, I totally get that. It makes a lot of sense. Um, triple flash combination attack pan only two successor was that fine all day like did you didn't need more than that yeah that was fine uh so my friend tristan was like hard on four because he's a much like more competitive Yu-Gi-Oh player than me and he just sees successor and thinks well that's broken it's like reinforcement of the army right um, and obviously in a like mana based card game and a combo based card game you've kind of got to think well if i draw that off my ex evolve it's like i have to search for a 5k combo that i don't really want and it could just be a bad ring um and it could be like any other card that i actually want to draw so two was fine we there were loads of hands where you just had too many bardocks in your hand so i think six was just the fine number because that was mainly what you were searching with it um and then obviously you have like the one of ultimate potential to search with it as well i think two was fine i wouldn't play any more yeah i can see that uh i can see that the only thing i i'm not necessarily disagree with but like if you're if you're finding yourself reliant on ultimate, ultimate potential uh one is a little small with the two successor it's like three copies i guess so it's not bad but i see i see what you're saying uh and then the adoptive father one was fine i'm sure because you just want to use it after you awaken if you need to go aggressive right uh i'll be honest i think i'd probably cut adoptive father in the future like if the game gets to a point where you're playing adoptive father you've probably lost in, in this type of deck yeah that makes sense yeah so like it just it was such a dead card because we just never got to the point where it's useful and if it ever was useful then we'd lost gotcha and uh three planet vegeta so this is probably I'm, I'm assuming the turn one play if you have a yellow and no like bardock or no swap play so like if, you, if this was your turn one play did your deck become much slower or it was still fine um it was it was kind of rare that we did it turn one it usually happened on turn two if you couldn't find like your shoe gash or your three drop mm. So like if you'd been chronoed, you could do it on turn two to search your three drop for the next turn, or you could just search to you guess to go into the three drop if you had them. Um the the cop was like really good because there are a lot of hands where you like don't draw a three drop and it's like super sad because you just can't play. Um sometimes you like plan it into the red one drop and then play that to try and fish for the seven drop for turn three. Right. It just came up in a lot of like really weird situations. Uh, doing it turn one is like it's something you can do if you don't get Bardock, but I don't think that's why we played it. We were trying to Bardock turn one every time. Fair enough. No, that makes a lot of sense actually. I mean, it, I I, I kind of just said that there's not enough ultimate potential in the deck, but actually, Plant Vegeta searches that, so I take I I rescind that comment. Uh, <laughs> if it was Sharky, I'm sorry, but um, yeah. So no, no, that, okay. that makes total sense. Um, three bad ring. Two Bloodlust. This is kind of reminiscent of like Mecha Freezer GT. I don't know if you played that deck in the past, and that's yeah, why. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Two Bloodlust was like we we were siding it originally, 
and we were just thinking like what the hell are we siding it in for but it felt wrong not playing it uh, in some capacity but I, I just don't think the card's very powerful this format like anything that's worth bloodlusting has deflect and anything else yep. just probably isn't worth bloodlusting yeah, I mean, the only good ones really are kind of like Shadowrun Figure, Majesty, or Adult Cost Vegeta. Yeah. But uh, yeah, those, come up, up. those come up kind of niche, yeah. The the like main theory was in the mirror or against Lineage, because if they like Shugesh into Ultimate Potential or Kid Goku, we can just Bloodlust that, and then that covers that. But like, why would we not just main Kronoa? Because that does exactly the same thing. Yeah. So that probably could have just been a main deck Kronoa. Yeah, I gotcha. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's good in the situations it comes up in, but two is probably all you need. Uh, and then yeah. two, two Nimbus, one pure heart on Goku. Why not just fully commit to the uh, Force Yugesh? So, obviously, pure hearted comes off Vegeta, and it's like a a 10k draw. Um, and that, that was the main reason we just played one of that because we were on two and two for ages, and we were playing two Jarko and two Shugesh. And then yep. we were like, do we just play two pure hearted to search off Vegeta? And then we were like, how much does that come up? And then we were like, well, why don't we just play three Shugesh? Um, and then we were only playing two planet at that time. And then we were like, well, if we play three Shugesh, three planet, and then one of the normal super combo, then when we need the draw, we've got it. But we should always have the Shugesh if we need it. Right. Fair enough. Uh, and then two dependable, two caring mother Videl. So do you ever do you ever wish you had more aggro in this spot or like more dependables or more Videls? Or was that totally fine? Um. I don't think it ever came up as a problem. Um, we, we were toying around with three Videl. That worked for a while. Uh, we had to cut it down in the end for space. But as I've said, there's a lot of like crap cards in here that we could definitely cut, like intensifying that could become another Videl. Mm -hmm. Two Dependable was fine. Because um, sometimes, obviously, you go first, so Dependable is completely dead. Um, and you're just playing Bardock to Awaken to then like kill them on turn two or three. Gotcha, and gotcha. as long as... As long as you can get them down to like six life, it's probably it, it's fine. You don't like need the dependable push. It was just there if we had the Bardock already and drew the successor. Fair enough. Uh, and then three Shugesh, the one ultimate potential just for the Shugesh into blowing up an attacker play, and then two Bardock monkeys. So this was this actually more of like the go-to Bardock play was like putting the monkey on top of it for added pressure. There were an unreal amount of times that we played like a Bardock on turn two for one energy, realized we didn't have the combo. So you just swing with leader, take a life and draw a card, and one of those two cards ends up being the Will of Iron, and you just use your dead red energy to combo on top, and it becomes a double striker. That happened so many times. Uh, Bardock Will of Iron was like one of the best cards outside the combo in the main deck all day. Like It, it just became an alternate win condition in so many matches. Yeah, I, we, I can see that for sure. Especially when I played Broly Lineage before, like the Hyder Mastery play was good. Uh, that that was a big win condition, and especially in like the Shenron matchup. And that's what's really cool about this deck is that uh, it's it's an aggro deck that doesn't lose to like Striving or Borgos. Really, uh, that's yeah. that's pretty cool about it. Yeah, definitely. And we'll hop over to the side deck. Uh, two Killy Zone, three Kronoa, both just for the mirror match. Did you ever face like, anything? Did you ever face uh, what's it called? Pre a preemptive strike strategy or no? Uh, so yeah, that was one of the reasons we put Killy Zone in because we tested the preemptive strike, and that matchup can definitely go south. Um, we never went against it in the tournament, fortunately, because that was like one of those fifty-fifty matchups that we'd identified. Um, but yeah, my, minus Killy never really came up. Like I did side it in against the mirror, but it, it's I either didn't draw it or they didn't have bloodlust, so it didn't matter anyway. Mm -hmm. um, that could quite easily be two more strategies, which I may as well talk about now. Yep. Uh, strategies we completely like drop the ball on that um like midnight before the tournament we were like in bed in the hotel room and we thought holy crap we just lose to baby we <laughs> how do we beat that deck so we're like scrambling through our binders trying to find cards that beat that deck i've got two foils in my binder and that's it we don't have any commons <laughs> and we're like Damn. oh okay i guess we just side one each um but yeah, if we I did play baby, I got absolutely bodied. That matchup is unwinnable without strategy. Jeez. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, uh, it only so so you're worried more about them bringing down like the sand strength baby and decreasing your board rather than like because like you have to use this when you already have a board of red battle cards, like right? So yeah, yeah. Um, so it was more for the uh, after image and the revenge death balls. 
Gotcha, gotcha, like gotcha. Those, those, if they just leave two red energy on tapped, you can never attack safely because they just kill your triple flash and then you lose. Gotcha. Makes makes perfect yes. sense. Uh, and then four, uh, two extra flying Nimbus to complement two in the main deck. What other aggro decks did you actually face in this tournament and what which ones were you afraid of? Uh, so we prepped for Red Freezer because that's kind of a, it's pretty much an aggro deck mm. when it wants to be because um, we had a lot of trouble against that and flying Nimbus can help out a lot. Um, the only aggro deck I faced was the uh, Broly's, like, basically Storm, like the Lineage Storm. So he wasn't playing, like, any of the, like, big Lineage cards. He was just playing the three drops. Right. Uh, it's the dude who came first in Swiss. I'm not sure where he placed in top cut. Um, and, like, Nimbus didn't even come up in that. I just lost to myself pretty much. Like, I got him down to two life, both games, game one and two. He had four cards in hand. And both times, those four cards were Mirror, Champa. Like, okay, so I guess I lose. <laughs> that sucks. But, um, I mean, you know, it happens. It's card games, yeah. you know. It has yeah, to be. Yeah, you, play, you play well, you put a good deck together. But, I mean, at the end of the day, like, RNG is definitely a part of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, variance is definitely a part of card games. Yeah. And then, uh, so, one extra battering just for, like, Janemba and other turtley decks, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, pretty much came in like most matches. There were very few that I didn't like. Shenron didn't bother putting it in because they don't play that many negates. And like if they side into more negates, then their deck's just less consistent. So who cares? Definitely. And then uh, Striving. I'm noticing that Janemba is starting to cut a lot of like Deadly Defenders and Vegitos. So what did you want this against? Yeah, we were kind of like maybe like the, the cheeky Android player who's still like playing the like low energy spam androids uh right. it was mainly for again the green goku because we'd had a lot of trouble with that killing the barrier krillin uh so just getting rid of that was good um also kind of comes up against like in a really neat situation comes up against shamron if you have the like shu gesh into striving but there's no way they haven't drawn Kronoa, so that never comes up it was just there for like deadly defenders that we couldn't deal with Right, just like a good answer card. And then I didn't yeah. mean I didn't mean to skip over this, but I, I don't know, my brain just did. Uh force ejection mass sand and dark power black mass sand. Uh so if you want to talk about those real quick. I think force ejection is a great card. So uh yeah, give yeah. Give, give a little bit of thought on those. So force ejection was for if when we go against Shamron and we beat them game one every time, because that's what we're like meant to do, then they're gonna go first and try and do their combo as quickly as possible. We, we just play this card, and as soon as we play that, that's it. The game is completely over. There's nothing they can do. Um, it just guaranteed our wins against Shemron. Did it ever come up where you were able to resolve tw uh, two in the same turn? Uh, it did in testing. Unfortunately, we didn't play any Shemron Gogeta in the actual tournament, so it never, we never cited it in, but it was there. Yeah, uh, and good, then Dark so. saying was like, we wanted a card that covered a lot of matchups, in case we played against Rogue. And obviously this does, you know, veggies, it does uh, hand destruction if they're playing the like three drops and everything. Chain Zeno. It, it just, yep. Yeah, Chain Zeno. It just hits a lot of matchups. So we just had it there as a easy side in for Rogue decks that we hadn't prepared for. Solid. So, I mean, that's the whole deck. Uh, why don't you give us a little bit about like the tournament experience and uh, any, any shout outs you want to give? Uh, yeah, so the tournament was really good. Like I'm sure everyone said it was really well run because it was really well run. Um, pretty much everyone I played against was really cool. Uh, round one, sitting against a mirror was definitely a shock. I didn't think anyone else was on this deck, but <laughs> quite a few people in the room were. Uh, I played two mirror matches, beat them, lost to the Storm deck I mentioned, and Baby, because that's just... Yeah, there's no way I'm winning that. Uh, he ended up coming fifth in Swiss. Uh, played two Shemron hand controls, which were fine. One Janemba, which was like, I bricked game one and lost, but then game two and three were just super free. And I think that was all my matchups, possibly. I'm probably missing one. Um, yeah, so came 22nd, got top 32, which was, you know, as good as I can hope for. Yeah, definitely. Especially when the, especially when the tournament is kind of weird in the sense that they should have had yeah. more rounds it, it was really sad that like 11 of the top 16 were janemba though because top cut would have just been so free if we'd made it could have like tore through that yeah that would be yeah, really, that would really strongly cool actually believe we could have but unfortunately it did not come out that way but i was really happy with the deck obviously there's a few changes but i definitely wouldn't have played a different deck nice 
yeah, I mean, if Jemba stays as popular as, as I think it will be, I think this will be a great pick for that. So, um, yeah, I mean, next time, yeah, when, when's the next uh, your, tournament in your area, if you, if you know? Uh, yeah, that's the problem. We've got, like, there's nothing on the horizon now. Like, there's one group of guys who do, like, tournaments dying around the area, but they get such, like, erratic turnout. Like, sometimes there's 14 people there, sometimes there's 40, and they're so, like, they're quite far away sometimes, so it's not always worth making the effort. Uh, fair to enough. then maybe just have like a 10-man locals effectively like euros is the big thing we've been preparing for and now it's over there's not like anything major on the horizon which is a bit of a bummer but i guess it gives me a chance to focus on Yu-Gi-Oh for a bit yeah play Yu-Gi-Oh for a bit T- take a little break when i got back from nats i wanted to take a huge break i, I took like a month-long competitive break so i mean just take that time decompress but uh yeah any shout outs you want to give uh, so shout out to my friend Tristan, obviously. We built the deck together, we played it together. Unfortunately, he came 66th, so just missed out on top 64 prizing, <laughs> which is uh, feels bad, man. Uh, yeah, shout definitely. out to all the, all the lads at Boards and Swords, uh, which is our locals, um, for testing against us relentlessly, keeping my spirits up when I was like, oh, this deck can't win anything, why are we playing this garbage? <laughs> uh, and all the people who came with me, because it, it was a really great weekend. Sweet. I'm glad to hear it. Well, that's going to bring this video to an end. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Uh, Jacob, thank you again so much for joining me. And we will no see worries. you guys next time. Hey guys, now that you made it this far, listen good, listen close. In this pile of bulk behind me, I've got a victory strike just sitting there, unsleeved. Just minding its own business, just wants to be played, just wants to be used, just wants to, you know, cheese people out of wins. And I swear, if you don't hit the subscribe button or check out some of our other videos right now before clicking off this video, I'm just I'm gonna rip it to shreds, I'm gonna tear it up, I'm gonna waste five hundred dollars if you guys don't hit the subscribe button or check out some of our other videos. I swear, I'll do it. I really will.